I finished watching the Netflix series Troy Fall of a City recently. Since I love Greek mythology so much, I simply had to give the show a chance and uh, in doing so I took note of a, of a few things you can take away from it and use to improve your own world building. Let's get into it. Hi guys, my name is Jesper and welcome to the Fane of Fantasy. This channel is all about giving you inspiration to master your craft and create fantasy that will truly immerse your audience. Stories of Sparta and Troy, together with the tales of Homer, has fascinated me, fascinated me ever since I first became acquainted with them in school. So it was with quite some excitement that I decided to give Troy Fall of a City a chance when Netflix and BBC released it. Just in case you are not familiar with the Iliad by Homer, here's a quick rundown of events as portrayed by Netflix and BBC. After that, we'll get into what we should take away from this series. Haven't been given away at birth because of adultery, a prince of Troy has been living his life as a farmer. The gods come to him and makes him choose one of them without making it real clear why. Anyway, Paris, that's the prince, chooses the goddess of love, Aphrodite, after she promises him that the most beautiful woman in the world will fall in love with him. Paris is uh, reconnected with his royal family in Troy, and we follow him as he sets out on his first diplomatic mission. You just notice this is going to go wrong, right? So he's heading to Sparta, where he finds the woman he believes was chosen for him. This is Helen, who is also the wife of the Spartan king Menelaus. Helen flees Sparta and returns to Troy together with Paris. And from here on out, you can almost guess what's going to happen, right? Of course, Menelaus retaliates and attacks Troy, and the rest of the story concerns itself with uh, how the war plays out, basically. Let's transition into what we can learn from this series then. Well, first of all, I like how they use the gods. When they present Aphrodite, Athena, Zeus, and I think there was a fourth one, but uh, that matters not to the point I'm going to make anyway, so who cares? But they use the gods to set in motion the events of the story. You know, throughout the series, the gods, they pop up here and there, uh, often in a bit of a mysterious manner, where we are not quite sure what they're up to. The gods never become a deus ex machina who, who jumps in at the crucial moment and, uh, you know, fixes everything for the, for the characters. I think that is something to pay attention to, as it really, it's really dissatisfying when the gods are used as a tool to miraculously fix the plot somehow. It's simply not believable. So, well done on that one. I could also add that the gods are put to great use to hint at Odysseus' home journey. If you know a bit about the Greek mythology, you know how that's going to go. Although in the story by Homer, Troy is said to be impossible to conquer, and when they do, Odysseus screams to the heavens in joy that now not even the gods can stop me. By doing this, he calls upon the wrath of the gods. This did not happen in the series though, but, uh, but they set up the home journey struggles really nicely anyway. Another thing they did, they did well was the use of Achilles. While the performance from the actor might have less left something to desire, I'll let you be the judge of that, to be honest, but uh, one thing is sure, and that is how superior a warrior Achilles is. I think Brad Pitt's performance in the movie Troy 
was far superior, but nevertheless, Achilles lives up to his reputation. I love that, and I think we should consider working with the reputation of the most legendary warriors in our setting. When Troy hears that Achilles refused to fight, they get more than excited. That's a very simple trick that underlines just how great of a warrior we are dealing with here. You know, it's, it's a subtle hint that requires no exposition at all. So that's really good. And that's something we can also take a note of. That was two things done well. So here are two things that left me wanting more and I think best avoided. When we are telling a story, we need to make sure we are not rushing through the plot. What makes a story gel with the audience, what makes us fall in love with it, is not all the external activities, it's the characters. In Troy, Fall of a City, the pacing is just too aggressive. I never really developed any true understanding and sympathy for, for the characters, because the series was always kind of rushing ahead to the next event. We never truly learn what the motives or motivations are for these characters and why we should even care what happens to them. So in comparison, for example, Game of Thrones does everything in their power when it comes to character development. Character development, that should really be our chief concern as storytellers. And then the other thing that truly annoyed me if you, uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you might have noticed that I pointed it out there too. So, uh, but when King Menelaus and the Spartans attack the soldiers of Troy, for some insane reason that I just don't understand, the, the soldiers decide to open the gates of Troy and charge out to fight the enemy in open terrain. I mean, what? It, I was shaking my head at the screen and... and was completely pulled out of the story. Why would anyone ever want to do that when you can just sit behind your walls and you know shoot arrows at the oncoming enemy? It was completely pointless, so that's certainly something to avoid in your own stories. It might seem like a more interesting fight when they fight hand-to-hand -hand melee combat, but it's a com complete unbelievable one, so I have no more to say about that. Let's just not go there, my friends, okay? I'm getting closer and closer in finishing Module 6 for our world building course. It's a monstrously big module that contains all the primary details around fantasy world building. As you can imagine, it's a big job to complete, and uh, then I also need to record it all at some point, but uh, that's gonna, going to be after the summer, so uh, not any time soon. If this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe and learn to master the craft of creating immersing fantasy worlds, setting and characters. I share new videos with you every single Monday. And hey, don't forget to uh, follow me on social media. Stay safe out there and see you next Monday.